Hello there, I'm Maria from the Rich and Simple Living and uh, I'm going to do a quick vlog video because um, I want to show you a bit of a homeschooling I'm going to show you what's going on in that kitchen so if you can hear banging behind that's Dean, he's banging tires off and if I thought what I showed you the other day was a disaster you want to see what's happening now I'll give you a quick look in a minute but we'll have to excuse the noise but yeah um, this week homeschool wise Sean's mostly been doing the book work this week um, yesterday not yesterday Wednesday this track of the days are on go so fast Wednesday uh, was International Nurses Day and so she did um, something a bit different than a book work then she well I was going to download some work from Twinkle but there was some Florence Nightingale comprehension and word searches and also there was some I did eventually find some uh, International Nurse Day comprehension and the word search but I found that a bit later and so I thought oh we'll um we did it ourselves really well so we Sean did herself really uh, she decided to google it and write it into her essay book so I might just give you a quick peek at that so you can see what she did I'll just go and fetch a book all right I've got a book We'll have to excuse the banging, it's getting quite loud and I've got the little bird in here chirping. Finally managed to get him, her, off the lamp again because it has gone a bit milder and we're hoping to put her out soon. We're preparing a pen for it <laughs> and hopefully be able to go out soon. So excuse the noises. So yeah, um, she did an essay on International Nurses Day and um, she googled all the information she googled what it was uh, what it was about what they did um, and also a bit about Florence Nightingale not a lot but he just touched on it so I'll read you what she's put actually um, she's put International Nurses Day is an international day observed around the world on the 12th of May every year to mark the contributions that nurses make to society. It began in 1956 and it's also known as ICN, International Council of Nurses. In Australia, Canada, the United States and other countries, International Nurses Day often is part of a week-long celebration, usually referred to as National Nurses Week. Each year a service is held in Westminster Abbey in London. During the service, a symbolic lamp is taken from the nurses' chapel in Abbey and handed from one nurse to another, thence to the dean who places it on the high altar. This signifies the passing of knowledge from one nurse to another. Throughout all this, nurses and midwives everywhere are continuing to work their socks off to ensure patients are well cared for. It's celebrated on the 12th of May because this was the day Florence Nightingale was born on in 1820. She died on August the 13th, 1910 in London, England. She was born in Florence, Italy, the city that inspired her name. Florence is known as the Lady with the Lamp because she would enter the British soldiers' wards at night with a lantern in hand. The theme this year is nursing the world back to health. And... Um, researching she believes that theme is down to the pandemics epidemic that's been going on worldwide so the theme is based on that that <laughs> so i've seen two titles for the theme this year but they both refer to the same thing and that's the one that sean has wrote down so i hope you heard me through bang 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 <laughs> so that's what sean has done um for the international nurses day this week and that's anything that she's done different the rest of the time we've been doing um book work we've been doing science we've nearly finished a year seven science book we're not going to do a year eight one but i did buy a key stage three one which is a lot more relaxed and so i think we'll go into that one then um and after that, we do, I think she's not wanting to do science after that book's done. Unless she changes her mind between 
now and when the next book's ended. Um, she's also been doing her English and we're getting up to Shakespeare. She doesn't want to do the Shakespeare. She doesn't like it at all. She said they touched on it when she was in year six at school and she didn't like it. She doesn't really see the point of it and doesn't understand it. <laughs> I said, well, that's fair enough. I mean, you're home educated. That's what it's about, isn't it? We go with what they like, what they don't like, all the strengths, you know, and it's all about what she wants to do. So we will we'll be skipping over the Shakespeare parts, but other parts of the English book she's quite happy to do. We did Mark Twain this week, and, um, yeah, she was all right with that. Some of a bit of the old word in is a bit trips her up a bit. Well, when she gets into the hang of it, she says, "All right." See, so we did that this week. Um, we're doing maths at the moment. We're doing times table reviews at the moment because, as I'm always saying, the maths is very weak, a very weak point. So I'm only interested in making sure she gets the basics, and she hates them to do that, but. I think you've got to have basics you've got to you need your basics don't you when you are grown up so yeah she's been doing that we, we do a review of all the times tables probably about this will be the third time since she started homeschooling which was last September so I'm thinking maybe um, a couple of times a year if I do them just to go over them and she has got a times tables maths book so she's not been doing the blue maths this week but she has been going through the times tables and I think there will, there'll be another week of that yet then we'll be back to the blue maths books um I'm trying to think what else she's done her history she loves her history um, we've just done world war two we just finished that and as you know she absolutely loves the world war history so she's just been doing that in fact, I'm going to show you some books that I got a free star. I don't think I've showed them you before. You'll have to excuse me if I have, but I don't think I have. So I'll, I'm going to show you them in a moment. Um, she's done geography this week. She doesn't mind geography. Some of it's okay. Then other parts of it she's not keen on at all. So she's a bit mixed with it. She doesn't mind it, but... There are some aspects, she, oh, I don't like that. So she's, she's a bit mixed with that. But yeah, she's been following the Key History book with that. So I'm hoping you're hearing me all right. Because the banging, there's a wall just through the hallway at the side. He's the other side of it. So it sounds like it's coming through. don't think it'll help much at it all, but it might be a little bit better. Yeah, so... Um, she, that's what she's been doing this week, really, following her books, other than deviating to do some Googling and on her International Nurses' Day. That's about it this week. Um, I can't think of anything else she's done. Not really downloaded anything spectacular this week. We've started uh, a new book for Read Alouds. Um, I'll just show you them now, actually, because she is reading one of them. I'll just show you them. Right, I just had to leave the room a minute and get the book. I realised I'd left it in the other room. So this is the book she's reading at the moment. I don't know if any of you have come across these books. What was D-Day? Um, the Great Little Books. Um, I don't know what age group. I'm trying to see what age group. Not that age group matters, but... She's got a marker and she's been reading a couple of chapters at a time, but it tells you all basically what was D-Day. goes into the details of it and the history. And it's nice because it's got some proper pictures at the back. Some nice old photos at the back. She likes the one there <laughs> because they're so um, real, you know. She likes them. So that's the book she read, and she said to me, because we'd finished the Carrie's War, she said, can I read my What Was books? And I'm like, oh, if you must. <laughs> I'm bringing you down a bit. I feel too high up, really. So, yeah, um, we've started on that. We've nearly finished that, because, as you can see, they're only little. But they're great. So she, next she's going to read the What Was Pearl Arbor. Again, not a 
big book, great for um, educational to teach them what they were. I don't think this has got any photos in them. Wonder what's in the middle. Oh yeah, it has lot. Got some pictures in the middle, and they've, they've got like um, drawings and sketchy pictures on each page. And again, it answers a question: What was Pearl Harbor? And goes in and tells you all about it, which is great. Um, another one: What was the Holocaust? So. Uh, we've got like sketched pictures again in the book and it goes well not into tons of detail obviously because they're designed for children to get a taste of them and the basic understanding and then what they like they can go off and you know look into more so you see they've got some photos in that that'd be the saddest book let's see Tells you about that. I'm dreading a reading that to me. Um, where are we? And then she's got what was the bombing of Pearl Harbor? And again, I don't know if I should have some pictures. And what I like about them, there's timelines on the back as well. Timeline things happened in, which is quite good. Oh yeah, picture of Hiroshima today. Some say Hiroshima. I have always said Hiroshima. I don't know. Which is right, whether any is right. <laughs> I suppose it depends where you come from, your dialect. Perhaps do set both ways. But yeah, there's pictures. So it's nice because it's got photos, and again, it's got like sketched pictures in as well, and tells them all about what it was. Now I've just ordered a um, what what was the Berlin Wall? I think it's called what what is the Berlin Wall? What was the Berlin Wall? Something like that. I spotted that one, so I've just ordered her that, so she should be getting that at the weekend. So yeah, she's got them. But they're a brilliant series. There's loads of them. I mean, not just about World War II things. They've got everything. What was NASA? And then it's got like presidents and prime ministers and nurses and famous people, you know, all sorts of things. I mean, I can't even think off the top of my head. It, Got also, I was looking to see if it actually tells you any inside because you know, some books they advertise other books, don't they? But I can't see. Oh, yeah, there's one here. We've got Who Was Anne Frank. Well, I didn't get to that one because at Christmas time she'd had a book on Anne Frank, a proper big book, The Diary of Anne Frank. So I thought, well, there's not point again of that because that's not going to tell her anything different that she weren't reading a big book. But it's got Who Was Franklin Roosevelt. Um, and the bottom two she's got but there's loads of them space dinosaurs disney all sorts go on here what was the hindenburg i think i've said who was franklin roosevelt who was albert einstein so there's loads i mean i can't even think off the top of my head but there's absolutely loads of them quite a few do come from america i think one of these came from america i can't remember which one and i had to wait a little bit a little bit longer for it to arrive but they're great they're brilliant and i got them from amazon and they they're roughly about four pounds some are three pounds some are, some are just slightly over four pounds so you could say average four pounds but for educational purposes they're brilliant so she's reading them at the moment so yeah and how was me expecting Jacqueline Wilson but now we went into them but she's got quite a few Jacqueline Wilson and other books that she needs to read so yeah so that education wise that's what she's done this week I mean we've not been out of our way and done anything great because we've got all this work going on and it's going to be like that for weeks I think definitely weeks so on the plus side though today we've had a bit of a clean up before he started knocking this wall and he's put the photos that i showed you the other day in the loft that were in the green bag they've gone in the loft along with the easter decorations he's finally put them in the loft um we sorted out oh, let me just swing your hands because you, you remember how it looked the other day there was boxes 
get my hand in the right position those boxes all in front of that drinks cabinet loads of them and those boxes piled at the side well they've um i've sorted them out they've gone into a like a job lot that i'm just going to bundle together i'm going to sell on ebay as a job lot for car booters etc i thought it'd be nice to do a, um, a yard sale outside but i've got to hang on to all the stuff and you've got to get a nice day to do it and we've got so much to do that i thought no i just want red i'll always have stuff always i can never seem to get rid of stuff so that's quite nice because all of that is gone all i've got left in the corner that there is um what i showed you the other day in the other room bread bin and that my daughter bought me for easter that's going to go in the kitchen when it's done so i've just stored it there for now because i know that's not there forever and i'm trying to get me under in the right place <laughs> there's a couple of boxes there well three one's a small one in the middle but they've got like um bits in from my auntie's house plates and cups and saucers so I thought well, there's no point in sorting any of that out until my kitchen's done and we start swapping the rooms around and I go through things and say because I'll have somewhere to put them then if it's what I want but I don't know what's in there because um, I was sort of pressured into having things because they wanted to get rid of that do you want some plates I have some plates and she's got loads and loads of plates absolutely loads so let's look at my other cousin was putting them in a box here. I'll put these in a box for you. So I've bought boxes home and I don't really know what's in them. Oh dear. So that's going to be interesting when I open them and sort them out. I said I don't mind a couple of smaller plates because with healthy living and eating, I thought part of that's not just what you're eating, it's, you know, having smaller portions. And it's easy to have a smaller portion if you've got small plates. So I said, I don't mind a couple of small plates. I have seen some small plates, but I've seen more than a couple. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not worth sorting that out yet until um, we get everything moving and around and whatnot, then can go through it. But the best thing is the main book's gone. It is boxed up at the moment. It's in four boxes and it's down at the very bottom end where I showed you where we'd opened it up. But I'll put it on eBay and stick it on for a pound and whether it goes for a pound or it gets bigger, I mean, it's worth a heck of a lot more than a pound, but... You know, to me, it's better than chucking in a bin and going to landfill. I would much rather give it someone for a pound than it go to landfill. So, yeah. So, if you'd like, we can go a look. Go a look. <laughs> go along and look how Dean is doing. And I'm going to show you the wall. You'll have to excuse the noise. I mean, even if I talk, I don't know if you'll hear me above the banging. I don't know if you can hear me now. Um, I'm going to have to check it out <laughs> before I upload you, upload you, upload me. <laughs> so we'll go and see, we'll just go along and I can show you what's happening. Right, I don't know how well you'll be able to hear me or how well you can see. Um, see he's coming off there, actually there's a big hole below. Can you just put your hand in where the hole is Dean? So, people can sit there say it's gone to the plasterboard on the other side of the wall which is in the hallway but it seems like um that area is not doing too bad now if it, the rest of it goes like that we'll be laughing but i don't know but if i can show you i don't know if one of the cookers in the way I see if i can point them to the corner above the microwave um can you see that see if i can zoom you in a little bit cannot zoom in or out on this mode oh okay i can't zoom in a little bit but there is another big hole like he just put his hand in and showed you that is exactly the same so i don't know how these are going to come off in between to it so um let's say i mean these few he's doing at the moment are coming off a lot better than what we thought aren't they we, we honestly thought the whole plasterboard was going to come off and if it does, the units at the top, it might weaken them and they'll need to come down so that it can all be re-plasterboarded. So, nothing's easy. <laughs> I'll just show you that one I showed you the other day by the plug sockets where we'd gone down to the wire. Um, 
there, oh there we go i'm sorry right, i'm trying to capture in the light you have to excuse all the mess because everything's had to move what um there <laughs> It was a big hole and there's bare wire. Well, I packed it in with some plaster, which is held in. And it's drying slowly. Once it dries, then more plaster can go in and all leveled up. So I'll turn around because I've got the light. I can't get the light right in here. There we go. So, yeah, um, we'll see what that does. But look at everywhere. Oh. <laughs> It's all in uproar. So that's the state of things at the moment. How they're all doing. So hopefully he can get all of that off. I'm just moving out of the way of the noise a bit. We'll go room to room. So this wall here actually, I can feel, put my hand there, I can feel where he's banging. <laughs> in fact might be a good idea to take the picture frame off the wall <laughs> the only thing that worries me bang him, is the electric boxes are down there and uh, I've got to be careful so and remember me telling you about the clock can you hear I don't know if you can hear the ticking probably not with the banging the hand had fallen off it to stop ticking and won't work in all of this banging made it tick <laughs> it started ticking even though it hasn't got the pendulum thing on because well, i call it hand it's a pendulum isn't it even though the pendulum has fallen off it's still ticking so yeah that's what's happening there i thought to show you how it's all going i can't wait till it's done so I don't know if I told you I'd ordered paint for the worktop. I was going to put new worktop in, but I found some paint and it's um, over from America. So I've ordered this paint. This cost me £100, but it's specially designed for worktops and it's got excellent reviews. There's no bad reviews whatsoever and there's plenty of reviews. So we're going to give that a whirl because, as I told you, we're going to paint the cupboard. So I'm hoping now tomorrow that I might go and get the paint for that because we got held up this week because of how everything's going in the kitchen so some of that wall will have to be replastered obviously some of it will have to be but we'll see how it goes see what happens now and what we can do with it <laughs> stress <laughs> i said i'm very stressed nobody was saying go out the room go <laughs> take your mother out of the way she's getting stressed it's like a bomb about to go off and get stressed <laughs> So that's what's happening anyway. That's progressing. It's not going to be quick. It's going to be a few weeks that job is, and especially as you've got to wait for plaster to dry. I mean, that doesn't dry in a hurry. That takes days and days, and he's got to have more than one lot. So it's probably not going to be till the end of next week when we can even start doing the kitchen. <sighs> so that's that. So now... Um, Friday I'll probably pop along again and see you all on Tuesday and we'll have a quick update what's happening what's happening outside and what at least it stopped raining at the moment so um, the vegetables aren't taking a batter in and it's gone quite warm muggy feeling and I noticed the lettuces the ones that are there seem to be picking up a bit since it went like that but then so are the weeds as well whether the new strawberries are they've got to be hoed but I'm thinking about putting all straw down there all the way along because it's not going to work to put it along where the um, what it is either the rhubarb and it might help suppress the weed you see I'm hoping <laughs> so yeah I think that's all that's outside that's happening at the moment um, nothing else is happening out there I've ordered a couple of um, you know, like the poly tunnels I've got out there. I've ordered a couple in netting because I want to put them at the end because we've got like a double one at the end that we've done with polythene ourselves, but it keeps dipping in the middle when it rains. It's catching all the rain and it's pulling and the leaks at the end are getting a bit squashed down. So I thought oh, I'd get some netted one. And also the reason I got the netted and not more of the poly was because uh, the rain doesn't get in through the tunnel one 
it it just doesn't go through because it's black plastic and you've got to water it underneath so i thought well, if i get the netted one not only does it keep it warm and the pests out as well but the rain can get through so i thought oh i'll get a couple of them beans i want to replace the end one and see how it goes so anyway i'm gonna go or i'll be waffling all day i've shown you what sean's been doing this week you've seen the disasters in the kitchen now that's progress and i'll keep you updated with that we'll keep having a look at that and also um the gardens are going okay and everything so i've told you about that so anyway i'll catch up with you on tuesday and we'll see what we've got to show you on tuesday so have a good weekend everybody and take care of yourselves bye